its emergence and impact. Lady and gentlemen, take a brief moment and reflect on the way the latest technology and the internet has evolutionized our lives. From the mobile phones that you use to the projectors that are present in this August Hall, it seems as if technology is inevitable. Many initiatives were a result of the internet in the 21st century. One such initiative, lady and gentlemen, was electronic governance. So what is this bizarre term that I am certain many of you have not heard of before? Electronic governance is the application of information, communication, technology for delivering government services. So in layman terms, what this basically means is that by using the internet and the latest technology, we establish an effective means of communication between the government and the citizens. Some services offered by your typical government include public health care or public education. And so electronic governance ensures that many of these facilities that can be offered electronically are electronically offered to the required audience. Now as the house is layered brick by brick and has its foundations laid on bricks, electronic governance also has its foundations laid on four different types of interactions. The first is the G2G or the government to government interaction. Second we have the G2C or the government to citizen interaction. Thirdly we have the G2B or the government to business interaction and finally we have the G2E or the government to employee interaction. All four of them form the basic foundations of electronic governance. So let us explore them one by one. Starting off from the very first type, we have the G2G or the government to government interaction. This is basically the definition of the G2G interaction. But in layman terms, what this means is that your typical government sectors like the health sector or the education sector, they can establish an effective means of communication with one another via the internet. Consequently, I have also displayed some of its advantages on the slide above me. One of the most commonly found examples that I can give you of the G2G interaction is actually in the United Kingdom. The Government Secure Intranet, short for GSI, was a virtual network developed by the United Kingdom for the United Kingdom government. It proved to be of an immense importance to them as it helped them overlook their government operations and their government machinery, enabling them to improve upon their governance. Ladies and gentlemen, this being one of the many examples prove that electronic governance is the way to the future. Moving on to the second type of interaction, we have the G2C or the government to citizen interaction. As the name probably suggests, this is the interaction between the government and the citizens of that government. The biggest example of the said interaction that I have for you actually lies right in front of you in our own home country, which is Pakistan. The Federal Board of Revenue, short for FBRs, offers the Pakistani citizens the ability to pay taxes online. Gentlemen, this example clearly shows that even a third world country, such as Pakistan, facing intense economic crisis, recognizes the importance of electronic governance. And we should do as well. Moving on to the third type of interaction, we have the G2B, or the government to business interaction. This is basically the interaction between different governments and different businesses. Some probable advantageous outcomes of this interaction are as follows. It is quite cost effective, where once both the parties had to commute from one place to another, they can now meet each other virtually online, either using Google Meetings 
or Zoom meetings. A case study was done, and it has been estimated that businesses can save over $33,000 per year just by using these online platforms. However, the second advantage is arguably one of the biggest, which is actually transparency. Transparency means that everything is transparent in front of both the parties, and nothing is hidden from them. Everything is crystal clear, which reduces the chances of corruption and gambling. Now, last but certainly not the least, we have the G2E, or the Government to Employee Interaction. Again, as the name suggests, this is the interaction between the government and the employees of that government. Some of its benefits are also displayed on the slide above me. We have electronic payroll, which is the ability to store and view records online. We also have electronic benefits, which, as the name suggests, is the benefits provided to the employees by the government that can be availed online. And finally, we have electronic training, which is a virtual training provided to the employees by the government. Now, gentlemen and lady, explaining how electronic governance came into being is quite essential for our understanding of it. Officially, electronic governance came into being in the 1990s. Unofficially, however, it dates all the way back to the 1970s when the computers took over the market. Since its emergence, electronic governance has been implemented by numerous countries. As mentioned earlier, Pakistan has the Federal Board of Revenue, which, according to the FBR's official website, has impressively generated a net revenue of 6.125 billion rupees in just the last year. We also have the Election Commission of Pakistan, which, according to its chairman, has successfully tested electronic voting in 2017 and are planning to implement it in the near future as well. If we look internationally, we have the government secure internet in the United Kingdom, China with its national informatization plan, Japan with its e-Japan policy program, and the United States with its national modernization programs. Now, gentlemen, even with all its benefits and advantages, it would seem as if electronic governance is a win-win for either side. Gentlemen, as there are two sides to a coin, electronic governance also has dual outcomes. It has its own set of pros and cons. Some of its benefits are displayed in the slide above me. These include improved accessibility and improved communication, but the biggest advantage is actually transparency. Transparent government operations result in limited corruption, hence increased trust between the citizens and the government. Now, gentlemen, in order to neutralize some of the positives, I will also have to mention some of its negatives. The most common concern about implementing the system of electronic governance and maintaining its operations is that it is quite costly. Due to its high capital requirement, this causes further complications. For instance, third world countries and poor areas have a limited access to such a luxury. Now, gentlemen, even with all its disadvantages, the world has started to implement the system of electronic governance. As you can see from the graph above me, this shows a general increase in the number of countries implementing electronic governance. The trend clearly shows that these countries must have seen something in electronic governance that has pushed them into accepting such a system. And we should also recognize that potential. Now, a question may arise. How does electronic governance even relate to round square? As mentioned earlier, one of the winning points of electronic governance was transparency. Transparency results in the citizens knowing and understanding the government operations completely. If the citizens vote through electronic voting, they would know what happened to their vote, and they would ensure that their vote goes to the destined candidate. Hence, for the first time in human history, the people's vote would actually matter. This safeguards democracy and promotes it to improved accessibility, which means that every voice 
can be heard from every corner of the area or the globe. This safeguards democracy and promotes it, successfully fulfilling one of the six ideals of Round Square, which, gentlemen, is democracy. Technology is something we humans just have to accept, especially in this day and age where it is essentially unavoidable. It impacts us in ways we cannot begin to imagine. And in order for electronic governance to prosper, we must accept and adopt technology into our day-to-day -day lives. With that note, gentlemen, I conclude my presentation. Thank you.